Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, as we celebrate the solemnity of Corpus Christi, or in English, uh, the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Jesus Christ, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. So to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. From the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for forty years now the Lord your God has directed all your journeying in the desert, so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has 
granted peace in your borders with the best of wheat he fills you. He sends forth his commandments to the earth, swiftly runs his blood. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. About 50 years ago, there was a conversation between two authors, and these two authors were well known in our country. One of those authors was Flannery O'Connor, 
She's actually one of my favorite authors. She's, she wrote many short stories writing about her own Catholic faith and her experience living in the American South. These two authors were discussing about the importance of faith. The one author went to talk about the Eucharist. And this author said, well, it has a deep spiritual meaning to me. I've always seen the Eucharist as a symbol. But it's a powerful symbol. And then Flannery O'Connor, out of the blue, in a quivering in her voice, she says, if it's only a symbol, then to hell with it. After she said that, she was surprised how that struck a chord with her. Because she said that the Eucharist was the most central part of her life. Not just spiritual life, but her whole life, her whole being, her whole soul. If you noticed today in John's Gospel, John's language is very careful. John, John records Jesus saying, unless you eat the flesh, unless you drink of the blood, you will have eternal life. It's a very important word. Even scripture scholars, when they look at the bread of life discourse, they notice the change of the language that Jesus uses. Jesus, when he's talking about eating and drinking, is not just polite eating, if you will. But Jesus is saying even gnawing at my flesh. It's a big rap, but to take part in me. Because Jesus wanted to give us himself. Jesus wanted to give us food for the journey. And as we know, uh, physically, we can't survive without food. For a little while we can, but after a while, things go south pretty quickly. Jesus wanted and is giving himself to us every day. Every day in the life of the church. It's no coincidence that we hear the gospel and then we hear Paul's letter to the Corinthians. And we could say that in a short passage from Paul today, that is the first lesson on what it means to be the church, or in fancy terms, ecclesiology study of the church. The church is one loaf. The church is unified. The church is one. Regardless if you're in a beautiful cathedral celebrating the liturgy, or if you're in southern India, South America, wherever you may be, to the diversity of the church, the church is still one. The church participates in communion. When you and I gather every Sunday, I would venture to say that one of our temptations is to fall into the routine of life. 
And having a routine is a very good thing. Organization, having a schedule. But at times, with the Eucharist and other sacraments, we may be tempted to fall into that routine. When we receive the Eucharist, what is going on in our hearts, in our minds? When the priest or the deacon or the extraordinary minister of Holy Communion say, the body of Christ, what does that mean for us? What do we say to the Lord? when we receive the Eucharist. And at times, my dear friends, that does come at a cost. When we gather around the altar of the Lord, we know that Jesus faced the cost. In John's Gospel that we heard a couple verses later, what do we see happening? We see the crowds disappearing, some of the crowds disappearing from Jesus. It became a very difficult teaching for them. Jesus didn't say, well, it's only a symbol. Jesus didn't chase after them, saying, wait, wait, I didn't mean it like that. Jesus knew of his mission of salvation to the whole world. No one was going to make Jesus compromise that loving mission. And even those disciples around the table of the Lord, they faced the cost, this treatment, and most of them, of course, as we know, death. So today, what is all this mean for us? Will we, as the church, continue to remain with Jesus? Will we perhaps be like Flannery O'Connor, who gets nervous, and that's okay, and makes that quivering defense of our Lord in the Eucharist? So as the body of Christ is lifted up today, as the blood of Christ is lifted up today, we know that our gifts and our challenges, our crosses, are lifted up as well. Let's always remember that communion brings us home, that communion is wholeness in our own fragmented lives and in our world. Thank you. 
of the Christian life is the most holy Eucharist. Rejoicing in this incomparable gift of God, we praise the Father and pray. For the Church, the body of Christ, that we will deepen our devotion to the Eucharistic sacrifice, which gives life to the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the redemptive power of Christ's Eucharistic sacrifice will extend to the hearts and minds of all those who govern. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who live in want, that Jesus, the bread of life, will be their sustenance, and that we will bring the mercy of Christ to all in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the graces of the Holy Eucharist will inspire an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist will strengthen all marriages and families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our RCIA candidates who will be received into the church tomorrow afternoon, that they may continue to grow in their love of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Herb Schroeder, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, the gift of the Eucharist blesses us with the presence for which every human heart longs. By partaking in the Holy Eucharist, let us become more perfectly the body of Christ. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Always and everywhere to give you thanks, 
Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed mm -hmm. clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we abide. the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many through the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
this side. I'll be in the middle. Uh, we'll release this side of the church first. Once this side of the church is finished receiving communion, we'll have this side receiving communion. Patricia will distribute uh, on this end. And you can also take the masks off in your pew. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the suffering of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall not be
spiritual communion through those of you watching us. My Jesus, I believe that you are the blessed Savior. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I may not now receive you sentimentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself in the spirit. Never permit me to be separated from you. Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.